Hi, it's the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday evening, October 17th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and the National Weather Service for the best information for your location. We're watching the development of a storm in the western Gulf of Mexico, pretty typical late season kind of development with a combination of tropical and non-tropical influences. We kind of have this uh, broad low, which was kind of a tropical disturbance that came up out of the Bay of Campeche, and we now have it centered sort of in here, and the recon plane is in there finding a broad closed circulation. Uh, but we also have this, this large cloud mass off to the northeast, and this is in association with a lot of bare clinic forcing due to an upper level trough over Texas, which you can see better on the water vapor loop here, shown rotating aloft. And uh, this upper low, uh, or short wave, it will soon open up into a trough, is advecting eastward, bringing with it strong vorticity advection and thermal advection aloft, uh, warm advection out of the south in the upper levels, which is causing a lot of large-scale lift over the northern Gulf. And this is the kind of situation that would lead to natural low formation in this region, regardless of any tropical influence and so this is a non-tropical process we just so happen to have a tropical disturbance that's sitting here waiting to kind of get pulled in by coincidence and this is going to add a dose of tropical moisture and convection over all this warm water into what is a uh, a non-tropical forcing type of situation. Uh, the result of this is that we're likely to see this low while it's anchored down here right now. It's going to likely just kind of jump here because all this lift and all this uh, precipitation and latent heat release is causing pressure falls in the central gulf and we're likely to see low pressure relocate up here and so the low as it stands is likely to kind of make a jump very quickly overnight or tomorrow morning into this location south of the Mississippi Delta and this we'll see a very very quick progression to this location and then slower movement off to the northeast toward the central and eastern Gulf Coast as this upper trough progresses steadily eastward and the uh, forcing for cyclogenesis out ahead of it moves eastward with it. And if we look at the GFS evolution of this, uh, we can sort of see that happen. This is the well, forecast for 8 p.m. near the time of this video's release, you can see the tropical disturbance here and a little bit of a trough extension on the model showing some of the pressure falls that are starting to happen. So again, likely to see kind of a jump up here. And by hour 24 on Friday afternoon, 2 p.m. tomorrow, we see that the low has indeed sort of jumped up here, and we see this uh, strong deepening with a now extensive wind field, especially on the eastern side of uh, 30, 35 knots, which is going to become a problem for the eastern gulf because of uh, pushing water uh, toward the coast. And there's actually a warm front in here, so we've got a low, and there's a very, very nicely defined warm front with east-northeasterlies here, south-southeasterlies on the southern side. So this is not fully tropical. Now it's probably going to be called a tropical storm and we can debate whether or not that's accurate, but it's not going to change the impacts for all of you guys living in the eastern Gulf of Mexico because regardless of what it's called, uh, it's a storm and it's doing its thing. And what's going to be the big problem here is going to be this development of strong southerly flow pushing water into areas like Appalachie Bay and the west coast of Florida, which are very prone to surge, very easy to push water into low-lying areas here. And even if this is, this is not going to be a hurricane most likely, but we're going to see you know, winds 40, 50, maybe gusting to 60 miles per hour on the eastern side of this, kind of pushing water into the coast, and it doesn't take much to cause flooding, and that's currently the big concern here. Now, as for how strong this gets and when it gets uh, to its maximum intensity, that depends a lot on the non-tropical part of this evolution. So if we look aloft here, this is the 250 millibar flow on the GFS valid at the same time. So remember, our low is centered here. If we look at the upper level flow, uh, our shortwave trough, is in here and so you can see that the low is sort of in this area of uh, the southeast flank of this shortwave where we see a lot of diffluent flow off to the north and northeast and this is where the baroclinic forcing is maximized and where we have the greatest uh, removal of mass at the top of the column away from this area of the Gulf of Mexico and so this again is where uh, low development would be favored in any non-tropical situation anyway and uh, we see our low would be deepening uh, very very steadily here regardless of the shear that's present when we move forward to saturday morning or late friday night rather this would be 2 a.m on saturday uh, we see that the low has popped up toward the western florida panhandle now at its strongest point on the gfs and you can see this wind field and we could even get uh, you know maybe some 
water rises on the backside of the Mississippi Delta here, and there are tropical storm force warnings as far west as Louisiana here, along with the rest of the Gulf Coast in between. Um, but as this now moves toward the coastline, we see a change with its alignment with the upper level flow. If we now look at the 250 millibar wind, we see that the surface low is now on the back side of this shortwave axis. And now the bear clinic forcing completely shuts off. That's all out ahead of the shortwave's advance. Once you get behind the shortwave like this, all the non-tropical assist actually reverts to a suppression. So you start to get confluent flow that starts to sink over the low center and you get a lot of dry air and all that stuff. So what would happen at this point is the low would basically occlude. We would stop seeing intensification and all of the heavy weather would progress off to the northeast of the low while the center itself will be dry. So we're not going to see a core of convection around the center here. Instead, we're going to see kind of an arcing comma-shaped cloud band of some sort in here with a lot of heavy rain and wind and potentially uh, a couple of tornadoes out ahead of the storm to the northeast. So this is going to be a north and east weighted storm. And again, the strong fetch on the south side into the coast is going to bring storm surge into the region. And that's the primary concern. This is the official forecast from the NHC showing uh, Again, currently a potential tropical cyclone, which means it's expected to develop and then impact land soon. And again, regardless of what it's called, tropical storm, subtropical storm, or whatever, it's going to be the same kind of thing here. Moving very quickly northeast tomorrow, this is a quick moving system, which means inland flooding due to rainfall is not particularly likely, though isolated flash flooding is always possible uh, when uh, tropical-ish storms are making uh, landfall. Soil is pretty dry right now, though, so they note that flooding risk is lower than normal inland, which is good. We do have tropical storm warnings again from the Mississippi Delta and then from Mobile Bay uh, over past St. Mark's and uh, watches for the Big Bend area. And uh, we could see warnings come a little farther east depending on whether the track drifts a little bit farther over toward Appalachia Bay, in which case the strong southerly flow would bring stronger winds to this part of Florida than expected. But the big problem with the storm is really going to be the surge. And we have that storm surge warning again well east of the, the storm center, which is coming in through here. But the real problem is the big wind coming out of the south and pushing water into these very uh, flooding prone areas of the coastline. And again, that that's the big concern here as the storm moves in during the day on Friday and into Saturday morning when it's expected to be near the coastline. So again, kind of a hybrid situation, a little low here, going to pop up and then strengthen very quickly in this area and then probably level off and start weakening as it moves into the Florida Panhandle with strong wind coming out of the south on the eastern side and probably some brisk winds out of the northeast uh, along the central Gulf Coast and into the Mississippi Delta as well. So gusty winds, heavy rains, but the big problem, storm surge along this section of coastline where warnings are currently in place. Stay tuned to your local weather office for the latest details for where you live and stay safe everyone that's it for tonight thanks for watching